Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Jason Mackey's First Ten, a quick hit podcast to get you ready for the day. Today is Monday, July 28th, and we've had a busy couple of days in Pittsburgh. The Pirates yesterday won 6-5 to five in 10 innings against the Arizona Diamondbacks. They were able to avoid being swept. We've had several days of Steelers camp up in Latrobe. They're off today before the first padded practice. Plenty to get into there. First, want to remind you, though, that we're sponsored by the North Shore Tavern. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love it there. The interior is wall-to-wall pirates. There are appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and, of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone. Open every day, the North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. So I'm actually going to start with some Steelers topics, some stuff that I've thought about. I was up there Thursday and Saturday uh, trying to balance the schedule between there and um, didn't go anywhere yesterday, just wrote a column and uh, when the Pirates get back in town, having to, to figure all that stuff out for the first time. Good problem to have, of course. Love this time of year. Uh, but just some storylines that we've been talking about up there, some stuff that we've seen, some stuff that I don't understand. Again, and Russell Wilson would be number one on that list. Um, he hasn't really done anything through the first four days. They're also not in pads. I don't think it's a big deal. I really don't. Um, he's thrown a lot after practice to guys. He's 35 years old. Um I, we, we've listed his ages, or I've listed his ages, 35 and 36, but I do believe he's 35. In any case, uh, is this a reason to freak out? No, it's not. Uh, there's the natural question of what in the world was he doing pushing a sled during a conditioning test. I think that's a good one. Um, can't say that I've seen that or heard that a whole lot out of a quarterback, but I feel like that we, we've chewed on that story enough. But is this a, a significant thing with Russell Wilson? And I just don't think it is. Um, Mike Tomlin said that he's going to be taking part in some of the team portions of practice starting Tuesday, whatever. I'm not going to get upset about it. If anything, it's been interesting to see Justin Fields, who's going to have his reps limited once Russell Wilson comes back. There's been some good. There's been some bad. He struggled early on in seven shots, but also seems to throw a pretty good deep ball. And uh, it's certainly athletic. I would say Justin Fields has basically become as advertised. So I don't get the freak out there. I also don't get the freak out. And I wrote about this at post-gazette.com today in my column um, about George Pickens and Zach Azani, the wide receivers coach. Like on on Thursday, I'm standing there and they're sort of screaming at each other. And it's intense. It certainly is. I don't think it's a problem, but it is noticeable. Um, I'm glad somebody got in Pickens' face. I don't have any problem at all about that. Um, So, well, If that continues every day, that's going to get real old. And then I went back on Saturday and I watched the two of them have a couple perfectly pleasant interactions. So it happens. You you would hope that the coach nips in the bud early. To me, this is the perfect time to do that. Uh, Certainly something to monitor. And I don't think George Pickens can, every time he has an emotional outburst, start screaming at people. That's not going to work out. But I, I like the intensity. I admire the intensity. And there's certainly there's a lot of physical talent that comes with that. And it's it's on the Steelers. And I think Azani realizes that, at least according to actions, that's what I would infer, um, that the, that sort of stuff needs to be harnessed. So anyway, a couple more Steelers topics I wanted to throw out there. Uh, yesterday was an interesting day. Broderick Jones was injured either early on or in the first place, something like that. Troy Tanu filled in. Uh, according to our Ray Fittipaldo, looked very, very good. Um, not really surprising given his draft pedigree and and what we've seen through minicamp and OTAs. Now, I understand there are no pads on. I, I also don't think that's going to change the calculus too much for, for Fatanu. Um, and it's an interesting situation with the Steelers' tackles, and I want to get into that briefly. Uh, I, I don't understand if he's even remotely close why you wouldn't start Fatanu right now. Um, I'll live with it. Dan Moore Jr., uh, nothing against him, but reps you give him are kind of wasted reps. I would rather be building things with Fat Tanu on the right side, Broderick Jones on the left, and Dan Moore. I mean, thanks, man, but like you're probably just a backup for us at this point. And it, it maybe he goes elsewhere next season and gets a contract, and that's great, and wish him well. But right now for the Steelers team build, it makes the most sense to me to play your franchise tackles in position and get them reps as soon as possible. Now, if Fat Tanu's not ready, that obviously changes the calculus. That's fine. Um, but – as of now, it, it doesn't look like that's going to be a problem. The the sooner you see Fatanu, Zach Frazier in the lineup, the more they get to build, the better. All right, get a couple more Steelers things I want to get to briefly before we delve into that um, Pirate series over the weekend and some trade deadline talk. On the other side, of course, of a break, and thank you for the sponsorship, as always, from the Bradenton Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. 
Embrace the laid-back charm of island life while sinking your toes in the sand and discovering real, authentic Florida in the Bradenton area. Unspoiled beauty and pristine beaches, a vibrant waterfront downtown energized by local arts and culture, fresh Floribian cuisine with a flourish of rich history, and friendly locals ready to welcome you to this preserved paradise on Florida's Gulf Coast. Plan your visit today at BradentonGulfIslands.com. And welcome back to First 10. One of the interesting storylines I think that we've been monitoring that I think is going to continue to be a storyline until it's not is who was the number two wide receiver opposite George Pickens. Right now, I would put Van Jefferson in that position. That's probably how I would have answered it before training camp started, but he has looked very good. Roman Wilson had an excellent practice on Saturday as well. Somebody who was a little bit quiet during mini camp and OTAs and all that stuff. The only thing with that is Van Jefferson actually has an NFL resume and can be comfortable in that spot. I also wouldn't discount Pat Fryermuth in terms of who their second most popular pass catcher is. I say all that to say that I, I don't want to necessarily throw Roman Wilson into the deep end so far. Let it, let him, let him earn the reps, let him earn the time. And I think he will do that eventually, but it's been encouraging that both Jefferson and Roman Wilson have been good. Uh, I'm going to have something on Patrick Queen a little bit later today. It's a fun story about some of his trash talking attitude toward that, the rivalry with Baltimore, et cetera. Make sure you check that out on post typing gazette.com. All right. So as far as the pirates go, um, watching that game yesterday and not feeling great about their offense, the scope of things, um, the direction they're headed, it would, would have been a sweep going into a series against the Houston Astros. Not exactly an easy situation. Well, here come Rowdy Telez and Joey Bart, and they had different ideas. Um, and what a what a game that turned out to be, huh? Like Rowdy's battling back spasms, comes in, doubles. Joey Bart, uh, just a, another clutch hit from him. And then you go to the ninth. Jared Triolo, having never played the outfield in Major League Baseball before, makes a diving catch. Incredible. You've got Yasmani Grandal over at first base because, because of all of the defensive changes. Um, and then how the Pirates rallied for four runs in the 10th. Uh, absolutely nuts. Like the calls reversed against Andrew McCutcheon. G1 Bay scores on a wild pitch. They intentionally walk O'Neill Cruz. Alika Williams gets hit by a pitch. Key Brian Hayes, a two-run single. Um, just, just some nutso stuff. Go to the bottom of the 10th. Colin Holderman on, gives up two home runs. Um, why that was not fan interference, by the way, on the, home, on, on the second home run, I will never quite understand. Uh, but about a billion things happened after Mitch Keller pitched and pitched well. Um, seven innings two runs, six strikeouts. I was looking to see how Keller would respond. I mean, that's that's what you need out of your ace, right? You need this performance that stops some crap and really reverses things, and he did it. Uh, at the same time, the offense struggled to get much going until the end. I still have concerns about the offense going forward, and I, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I, I certainly hope and think that a bat will be on the table. They need to. Um, at the same time, like you can't add five or four or five bats or whatever. I looked at Sunday's lineup, five hitters with an OPS under 600. I mean, that that's not fixable at the trade deadline. And that's why when Charrington says things like, you know, internal improvement is going to matter more than any one player we can get, that's an unsexy answer, but he's tr he's right. He's right. You know, that like they need Key Brian Hayes to find it. They need, I don't know, Jared Triolo to be the player he was in spring training. They need... Maybe it's something from Henry Davis. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Jack Sawinski would be one I would put into that category, but he was sent to AAA after the game, which I, I can't even argue with the move. You know, it's the right move. He looks lost up here and he needs to find it. I would argue that way back when they probably rushed his return, they stuck with him. To, I, I have not understood the development with Sawinski. That's another conversation for another day. Um, but, you know, they need internal improvement. And, and, you know, I still think in hope and believe that they will add to the team at the deadline. That remains true. Um, I'll be curious to see which route they go. Honestly, uh, my impression going into this was that they would want somebody with years of club control after this, not a pure rental. And so uh, who is left in that discussion? Lane Thomas, Brian De La Cruz, Taylor Ward. I guess Lane Thomas would be my my leader there, but I can't say I feel great about all of them. Uh, Brent Rooker and J.J. Bladet would have been very much in that discussion, but it seems like the Oakland A's are no longer willing to trade them. Would have liked Jazz Chisholm. That would have been fine. 
Um, Jesse Winker is honestly somebody that made the most sense. Now, Chisholm and Winker went to New York teams over the weekend, as you know, uh, but the options are kind of dwindling. You play Yandy Diaz. Um, he was somebody that I also posited about in, in the column that I wrote most recently, but it's not a great fit. I don't want to sit rowdy. You're paying Key Brian Hayes a lot of money. I'm not sure you want to make him a platoon player at that price. Uh, Tommy Pham, maybe, but it, it feels like doing something for the sake of doing it. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a lot to figure out between now and the trade deadline, which is Tuesday at 6 p.m. I think we're probably going to see um, a lot more you know, names pop up or discussions had or whatever. I certainly hope so. I mean, the Pirates have the team to do some damage. Saw this yesterday. They're 39 and four when they out hit the opposition. Can't really, can't really argue with that. That tells me I need to out hit the opposition more. That might be the strategy. So, all right, I've gone a little bit over time. Uh, make sure you check out my uh, Paul Skeen's article, by the way. Um, it's about his warm up routine, what goes into it, what it means, et cetera. Um, had a lot of fun doing that and, and kind of wrote about that a little bit. But anyway, uh, that does it for my time here. Paul Skeen's night tonight. We'll be back to, to recap all of that stuff and more on First 10. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can get all of this content from our other Post Gazette writers, reporters, columnists, all those fun people. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.